As uh, we welcome uh, back into the uh, the, the studio, uh, the sheriff of uh, Jones County, Alex Hodge. Uh, Alex, good to see you again, man. Good morning, brother. I, I wish that we could be talking under better circumstances. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I, I saw you out in the hallway. I said, boy, you've had a week, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll get to kind of what transpired uh, last Sunday afternoon into early Monday morning. Uh, but I, I know the main reason that you're here this morning is is to uh, get the word out on on one of your fellow uh, men with a badge, uh, one of your deputies, uh, L- Lieutenant uh, Tony Stiles, who was uh, critically wounded in the standoff uh, uh, early Monday morning. And first of all, how's how's Tony doing? Well, I just got off the phone with Tina uh, just a few minutes ago, and uh, he remains critical but stable. They're prepping him for uh, yet another surgery this morning, and uh, we just Tony, Tina, the whole family, the victims of the other. Uh, members, uh, everyone, including our department, all the agencies that was involved, we need a lot of prayer. I mean, uh, we have a mission at hand. I mean, we've still got a mission at hand. The phone rings, the radio's going off, and the next call's coming, and we've got to be focused and sharp and ready to go, but uh, we've got to heal and, and, and deal with this as well. Um, but, but Tony's a, a fighter, and uh, he will, he'll, 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 if he can be done with his faith, and I know he's a Christian because he's given me his personal testimony, um, uh, with God's will, he can he can come through this. Now I know. Uh, I mean, this has been in the media, both print and broadcast. Uh, it's even made. I've seen it on CNN and, mm-hmm. and some of the uh, the major uh, uh, news networks. The the, the story itself. Uh, and, and I know this has been discussed some, but uh, uh, now Tony got hurt in the initial. Conf- it, not the initial confrontation, but the uh, it happened shortly around midnight, did it not? Yes, sir. What happened was we had received a domestic call that had been involved a shooting, and we uh, responded deputies. Uh, when the deputies got there, uh, they heard gunshots. Didn't know where it was coming from, uh, but they heard them. Um, they learned that uh, allegedly Mr. Newcomb had shot his son-in-law. His son-in-law was taken to the emergency room. Um, they have established contact uh, with Mr. Newcomb. Uh, he's still at the house. They're out in the road. Um, he's telling deputies that uh, he shot his wife, he shot his daughter, and he shot his son-in-law. Now the and son-in-law has already been taken out of the house. Son-in-law's gone. Now. Okay, yes, he's already he's, gone. he's, he's all, okay. He's, all right, he's, he's headed to the hospital. Okay. Um, and this is uh, what time? This is uh, around three thirty. Three thirty Sunday uh, afternoon. Sunday okay. Afternoon. All right. So deputies, when they hear the gunshots, take cover, uh, establish communication with him. Uh, again, he says what he's done allegedly. Uh, again, all this is alleged. We don't know this for a fact. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll have those say, well, why didn't y'all just go up our guns blazing and shoot the man? That's not the answer. Um, so we, we back up. Uh, we, we negotiate. We uh, deploy the uh, SWAT team and negotiations team because he says uh, he's got his grandkids in the house, six and seven years old. He said if we advance the house, he's going to kill the grandkids. Um, and so what happens next is we begin negotiating. Um, for several hours, uh, again, Based on what he's telling us, that he's killed his wife, he's killed his daughter, and he's got his two grandkids. Again, the the, the threats reduced to that area, um, and so what our motive right now is is to preserve some life and get those people out of there. Uh, all we know for a fact is the kids, because we can hear them in there. So they negotiate. Major Don Scott did a tremendous job negotiating. We have a trained hostage negotiation team. Major Robbie Suber did a flawless effort. He led a beautiful. I was in Oxford. Mm-hmm. Uh, you hear, oh, the sheriff wasn't even there. I had left after church and went to Oxford. I was supposed to start command college Monday morning, uh, prep for the National Academy. And I went to, was in Oxford when all this unfolded. I monitored it for a certain time. I have a great team. They don't need me here. I can't be everywhere. Sure. And as I as it progressed, I just become you know concerned for my team. And I get, I, I put my suitcase back together and I come to, come to, come to law. Um, but as everything happened, uh, several hours uh, after the negotiations started, the kids were released. Uh, several hours passed from negotiations. We made a decision uh, to gas the house. Well, about the time we decided to gas the house, uh, allegedly the mother now, who's supposedly dead, starts texting the son. We so don't, you think you think the mother now the the children's mother or his, this would be his, the grandmother. His, his ex-wife. ex-wife. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mr. Newcomb's ex-wife. She starts texting her son, supposedly from his mother. Yeah. Now okay. She, she's in the house, supposedly. Mm-hmm. We don't know this. It could be him. Sure. So we had to try to validate that as much as we can, but we was fixing to gas the house before that started happening. All right. As a result of that and us finally believing, well, maybe this is her, we couldn't gas the house. The door was barricaded. 
Had we gassed the house, number one, she couldn't have got out. We'd have killed her. Right. Had she got up, she's in there playing possum. Had she got up and tried to leave the house, he's done shot her once. Mm -hmm. So he's going to shoot her again. Again, we killed her. And so we didn't gas the house. We backed up. We looked at everything we had. Not only do we have a, a, a eradication, are we trying to get that suspect, but now we got a rescue mission. We got a lady in here that we believe is actually still alive with a hole through her head. And so we had to go in. We had to go in. And Tony Styles is going to lead that charge today, tomorrow, yesterday, and he'll do it. He, Tony Styles is, along with all the members in law enforcement that were out there, are heroes, including ASAP Ambulance, MSERV Ambulance, Volunteer Fire, and all the other agencies that were there. But when we made the decision to enter that house, when Tony Styles went through that door, and he's going to be first every time, he went through that door with his rifle raised, Wearing the vest, you hear all kinds of yeah, yeah. Wearing yeah. the vest that Tony Styles walked into my office and said, Sheriff, I want that vest. I said, How much is it? Thirty five hundred dollars. Go get it. Because he's the guy going through the door. He mm -hmm. had the vest and the equipment on that Tony Styles wanted. And uh and so when Tony went through the door, he had his obviously his rifle raised and his arms was up. He the suspect was barricaded at ten o'clock. Open fire on Tony, striking him in the left arm and multiple times just below his vest in his abdomen. Tony goes down. The entry team, again, heroes, done a magnificent job. They, let me tell you how God works. They had trained for this very scenario Thursday. Wow. So here they are. Their brother's been shot. They're down. They're receiving gunfire. They start laying cover fire to get Tony and themselves out of the house. They do that. We back up. We regroup. Now, our SWAT team is the best in the business. They compete statewide, and anybody will tell you they're, they're good. And so this is not a fly-by-night organization. This is the best. These are a group of professional men and women. This isn't a bunch of guys that no, uh, you just round up on, on, on Wednesday and say, hey, you guys won't be a SWAT yes, team on Sunday. Yeah, they train yeah, yeah. rigorously. And so we backed up after 12, 13 hours of exhaustion, we had deputies having them. M serve ASAP was treating deputies for dehydration. Oh, y'all didn't have many food or water out there. Salvation Army, <laughs> Magnolia Baptist Church, Emergency Management. We had food. We had water. We had everything we needed, every resource we could possibly have. We had it. So the the deputies, our guys were just beat. Laurel Police Department, can't say enough about Laurel and all the other agencies, Lamar County Sheriff's Department. Uh, just, I can't got time to name them all, but you know who you are, and it was just a group of a large group of great people who come to the rescue. Um, started supplementing our guys. We called a highway patrol SWAT team. They came down, uh, made a decision to gas the house. Now remember, our guys made entry. We didn't gas the house because she didn't have a way out. Right. After we made entry into the house, we never established communication with Mr. Newcomb again. I don't know if he's alive or dead. We don't know if we killed him. But we never talked to him again. But we know she's saying she's in the house. But she don't know if he's alive or dead. So she's not going to get up. So when Highway Patrol got there, they made a decision to gas the house. Or we did, along with them. We gassed the house. She's got to go. Now, Tony and them breached the door. So now she's got a way out. Remember, that's why we didn't go in and start with Right, right. She didn't have a way out. So when we breached the door, we provided that way out. So when Highway Patrol came, we gassed the house. She came out on the front porch. Walked out with a hole through her head. It's amazing. They put her in that, sweep her away again. ASAP ambulance when Tony was shot, guns blazing, bullets flying. Them guys swooped down there, and they loaded Tony Styles up. I'm talking about in gunfire, and loaded him on that gurney, and they took off with him. And I'm telling you, probably saved his life. M-Serve ambulance right there with them. Uh, they come in uh, with this with this ex-wife. They got her. They got her out of there. We regrouped again. Highway Patrol then made entry to the house, and the suspect was deceased. Now, are you still this time, you were unsure of whether he took his own life or whether it was? Yeah, yeah. we're unsure right now, waiting on a coroner's report to find out if, if our fire or he, we do believe that at some point, you know, that there was a self-inflicted wound. Don't know if it was the, fa the fatal wound or, or the yeah, fatal wound yeah. or what, but that'll be determined. But look, there's a lot. A lot of people, if, if we'd have shot the man, say, for instance, oh, why didn't y'all shoot him? You know, I've been surprised get, you, by the people that say, why didn't you just kill him? Y'all should have killed him. This is South Mississippi. Okay, you shoot the man because he's allegedly shot his son-in-law. We've heard gunfire. We don't know that it's him. 
we do negotiate with him. He does tell us he did it. We don't know he did it. I mean, people say they do stuff all the time. They don't mean – we can't, you know. But let's say, for instance, we shot him. We make entry into the house and ain't nobody in there. Yeah. Now you – now Yeah. Then you have the other side of the, the coin coming at you yeah. saying, hey, yeah. why'd you shoot a guy who wasn't even holding hostages? So I understand that people are going to be cruel. And overwhelmingly, people's been supportive. But surprisingly, you got some people out there that has very much surprised me in some of the comments that they're making um, about how we should have done this and we should have done that. And uh, you can be critical if you like, but the fact of the matter is you wasn't there. You wasn't involved in the decisions. You don't know what unfolded. You don't know how it unfolded. Uh, and we made the decisions, and we don't regret them. I, t- t- I told Tina, and Tina knows, we don't regret any of the decisions that we made because we made the right decisions. I'm not saying we're perfect. We make mistakes. Can we get better? Sure we can. But we made the right decisions in that case. And as a result of the risk that these men and women put their life on the line every day, Tony Styles put his life on the line for a lady he had no idea who she was. Yeah, or even she was yeah. alive. Yeah, we, really. You we didn't assumed know. she you was. She we had a, yeah. Because after the text message, we just had to, we believed that, okay, she, she's possibly alive. And uh, otherwise, if we hadn't have thought any of that, people say, well, it took so long. Well, it could have took three or four days. The threat was reduced to that house. Why go in if it hadn't have been for preserving that lady's life? We wouldn't have went in when we did. Right. And so people can be critical if they want, but overwhelmingly people have been supportive. And uh, either side, you're going to hear that. But if people would just, you know, unless they don't know what they're talking about, if <laughs> they just a, true. commit their energy to prayer, that's what we really need. Now, uh, and and uh, I know you have something p- special planned tomorrow for, for Lieutenant yeah. Styles. Uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the Calhoun Community Center, and some friends of law enforcement are putting together a feed. It starts at 10 on Highway 84 West at the Calhoun Community Center. A lot of things are going on. Sawmill Monogramming is doing some stuff. Tina's co-workers at the hospital are doing some ribbons. Uh, Needleworks is doing some things. Um, the Chili's has contacted us uh, with uh, support. They're going to do a special day. Pedal's doing a softball tournament on the 18th. Uh, we're doing another. Businesses are doing another big feed on the 18th here in Jones. What you can do is just go to either my Facebook pages or my real page because my Facebook page is maxed out. So... Uh, my community page, you know, we keep both of them updated. So check both of those. Check our website, www.jonesso.com, uh, www.jonesso.com, or you can call the office, 425-3147, and we'll try our best to keep you posted. Uh, many are asking, what can we do? Pray. Secondly, uh, Community Bank, we have an account set up there uh, in Tony and Tina Styles' name. Uh, obviously, it's going to be very expensive for the family on Tina uh, and the outpouring has been there. But it's Community Bank, P.O. Box 265, Laurel, Mississippi, 39441. P.O. Box 265, Laurel, Mississippi, 39441, in care of Tony and Tina Styles. Again, I can't say enough about how thankful we are to the community for your prayers, your support. Again, all the agencies that were out there, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Tony Styles' his family thanks you. The other men and women of this department, thank you for coming to our, to our aid. Uh, without any question. And I know the uh, community bank also has accounts set up for uh, the, uh, the the Savile family, Absolutely, too. Absolutely, yeah. So. I've, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, the, the, those folks have suffered a great tragedy. You know, they have uh, the, the mother's funerals today. Um, uh, I don't want to drop names on the air, but, you know, the other parties that's involved, obviously there's one deceased, uh, son-in-law's in Jackson. Uh, expected to recover, but again, he was shot in the face, and uh, he's got a long road ahead of him as well. Um, you know, the grandmother, like I said, miraculously, after two days, she walks out of the hospital. Isn't that amazing? Uh, that's just it's, that's it's amazing, God, right there. God, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And we're claiming that for Tony, and uh, on behalf of Tony Styles, Tina Styles, and the entire family, again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you're doing, for the support, for the love, the prayers. And, uh, and, and please, don't forget the men and women wearing the blue uh, because I'm going to tell you, they own that line. Uh, people don't realize number one in suicide, hmm. number one in divorce, hmm. number one in alcoholism. Average age is 59 years old for a law enforcement officer. It's tough. Yeah.